Welcome to Alaska Watch, the show all about Bigfoot in the great state of Alaska. I'm your host, Beans Baxter. So lace up your boots, zip up your coat, and come with me on an adventure as we explore all things cryptid in the last frontier. All right, so this is it. Uh, first trip of the season. Uh, I'm advanced party for Chuk and Rob Roy. They're supposed to be coming out later. Uh, it's a beautiful day out here. I was worried I wasn't going to be able to get to camping spot. It is creeping up on Memorial Day weekend. And uh, I was a little concerned. So I came out early and got our spot. I'm echoing. So... Uh, I'm going to start setting up camp and getting ready for Chuk and Rob Roy to show up. I'm going to fly solo tonight and uh, just uh, kind of listen and maybe do a little recording and see what uh, what I can hear, uh, get the fire going, and uh, get everything set up for those guys showing up tonight, or tomorrow night, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm excited. It's the first trip of the season. Uh, the clouds have parted and the sun is shining. I was a little worried on my way here. I thought, man, it's going to rain. It's going to rain. I know it is. And it still might. We still might get some rain. But uh, just the my my secluded private spot here being, being open uh, and the sunshine greeting me put me in a really good mood. So uh, now I get to do all the heavy lifting and the hard work. All right, guys, I got my tent up. <clears throat> mosquitoes have come out. I don't know if you can see them or not, but they're buzzing around. I've been moving around putting the tent up, so they haven't been bothering me too bad, but I think once I settle down, I'm going to have to break out the bug spray. It's not even 12.30 yet, and I'm already got camp set up. Had a little lunch. Things are going pretty well pretty quiet but uh, a couple of miles down the road there they are installing some culverts in the road there's some construction crews down there so I don't know how that's gonna fare for our wildlife it might be pretty sparse but we'll see maybe it'll make something curious and it'll draw it in maybe not but I gotta get my bedding set up See, I've camped with a few people, I'm not going to name any names, and they would literally wait till they were ready to go to bed, or wait till it was like bedtime, to put their tents up, get their sleeping bags and stuff out. That's just not me. Like when I get someplace and I'm like, okay, this is it, this is where I'm staying, I want to, I want to nest, I want to set it up, like this is home. I want to get my tent up. I want to get a place to go from if it starts raining, which it is clouding up a little bit now. And I just want to get settled in. I don't want to have to do anything later. I want to do it now, get it over with, and just get it out the way. So, still got to get my cot and my sleeping apparatuses in there, sleeping bags, stuff like that. Get it set up for habitation. And, uh, that's pretty much it. Got a couple other things, some camp chairs and stuff I can set out. But uh, other than that, just about squared away. I haven't been here very long. I think I sweat more getting my cot and sleeping gear in the tent than I did actually getting the tent up. <clears throat> I was huffing and puffing. It's not easy getting all that stuff up in the truck. But anyway. It's been nice and quiet here so far. The uh, clouds are moving in. Mosquitoes have came out. Not too bad, but enough to where I applied some bir uh, bird spray, bug spray. So, yep, I'm just uh, going to look, listen, and uh, wait out the clock till Chuk and Rob Roy get here. I'm sure we'll have some interesting conversations. Hopefully we'll catch them on video and audio and get them out to you guys but uh i'm excited i don't really expect anything to happen but 
I mean, it's the first trip of the year, so I'm just glad to be outside. We had a rough winter. So maybe I might uh, wet a line here in a minute. I brought my fishing pole and there's some trout in this lake. So maybe I'll try and catch a couple. But uh, other than that, I think, I think camp is done. At least my part of camp. I've got my tent up, my sleeping area arranged. And it's only like one o'clock in the afternoon. So I'm going to... Uh, relax meditate a little bit and uh just listen enjoy nature you guys know i don't usually mess with the awning i don't usually put that up <clears throat> but it started raining and it kept raining and it wasn't raining hard but it was raining enough that i was like ah i'm just gonna put that up just in case because i want to keep that stuff down there dry and obviously i want to keep the inside of the tent dry and so i got this stuff out and i'm battled with it and battled with it and cussed and fought and got it up and sun came out i think i bet that thing's not going to last the night i bet it's when i get in i bet both those poles are going to like fall off <laughs> oh well so i'm sitting here on the bank fishing oh there's another one i just heard another boom Somebody's out there shooting. Not supposed to be shooting in here. I don't know if you guys are dead or not. I'll have to look. See if I picked it up. There was a few, a couple of cars that went by a while ago, and I, but I thought they both came back, so I didn't think there was anybody down there. But maybe they dropped somebody off. I don't know. Have to keep my ears open. Okay, I just heard it again. It is definitely fire, firearms. It's definitely guns. Just heard like four or five rapid shots. Probably somebody out here. Wanting to try out their new gun and don't know they're not supposed to be shooting out here. It's way off. It's not too far down the road, but I don't think it's any threat to me at this point. Look at that little guy. There he goes. I'm not sure what that is. Beaver, but I don't think there's any beavers in this lake. Huh. Weird. It's the first time I've ever seen one of those here. He came out right over there, went right past me, looked at me, and just kept on going. Maybe he's why I'm not catching any fish. Well, day one, my solo day here, is uh, just about over. It's uh, almost seven o'clock. I just had dinner. I was gonna, I was gonna have it a little later, but I started getting hungry, so I went ahead and uh, heated up some some lasagna. <clears throat> you know, I said I, I've got to, I've got to eat some of my uh, camp food before it expires, and I just grabbed that out of the box and. <clears throat> thought it looked good and fixed it up and I realized like that's not one of the one that's it's nowhere near expiring so I should have I should have chose something else so I have to make sure tomorrow at least for lunch that I eat one of the the older meals um it's been pretty quiet I've heard a couple of things uh nothing that I would really describe as squatchy although I thought I did maybe hear a very very distant knock but I'm not sure uh, there's a woodpecker that's been going on all day, like all the way around the camp. <clears throat> so I might have just caught like part of his serenade there. So I, I don't know if, if that was what I heard or not. Um, I did hear some gunfire earlier uh, down that way. And I heard 
what at first I thought was a dog, like a domestic dog. And <clears throat> then the more I listened, the more I thought maybe it might be a lynx. Uh, and I thought it was initially coming from, from that way. So I went over there, was trying to get closer to it and was trying to figure out what it was. If it was a dog, I didn't want to record it. Uh, and then come to find out, I think it was actually coming from that way. And it sounded more feline when I came over here, uh, but I wasn't able to, to, to capture any of it. And honestly, even if I got the recorder on, I don't know if it would have picked it up because it was pretty faint. And <clears throat> had a uh, federal fish and wildlife guy stop by. Uh, we chatted, oh geez, I don't know, probably for 20 minutes, almost 30 minutes. Uh, nice guy. Um, you know, we, we both uh, have lived here for a while and uh, I didn't outright ask him about Bigfoot, but, <clears throat> you know, it kind of eventually it came up, you know, who who I was and, you know, what I used to do and what I do now. And um, I mentioned my book to him and, and then I told him before he left, I said, if you see any Bigfoot, let me know. And he said he would. He wrote my name down, said he would look me up. So who knows? Uh, I always find it odd whenever you're talking to some of these federal employees and you mention Bigfoot. It's either one or two reactions. They're either like, oh, you know, that's silly, or why don't you go look for unicorns too, or something like that. Or there's just kind of this weird, like, stoicism, like they kind of get quiet. <clears throat> and uh, that's kind of what this guy did. And, you know, it might be that, like, realization that, like, oh, God, I'm out here with somebody that believes in Bigfoot and he's carrying a gun. <laughs> you know, it might be something like that, just that, oh, okay, this guy believes in Bigfoot, maybe uh, I'm not safe. Or, you know, I don't know, maybe I'm looking into it too much. Maybe it doesn't mean anything, really. Um, but uh, it just seems like they get kind of quiet and, and a little more reserved when you talk about Bigfoot. Uh, I don't know, maybe there's some kind of a, <clears throat> a Band-Aid or a, a policy that basically they're just not supposed to, to mention it. But uh, this is the first time... I've ever had anybody stop by here, uh, law enforcement related. Uh, I've seen the park employees come through and and clean out the bathrooms before, but I've never seen um, one of the federal fish and wildlife guys back here that actually stopped and chatted. <clears throat> I was a little worried. I think only the troopers would ask for my for my uh, fishing license, uh, but he got out and I'm like. Oh, because I have a fishing license. I've got one. I just don't have the physical copy with me. And of course, I have a copy of my email, but the service here is so bad. I'm like, I don't know if I'd be able to download it or not. And he didn't ask for my license. And we had a good chat <clears throat> and he left. And after he left, I got on my phone and I was able to like take screenshots of my, um, my fishing license and hunting license. So, uh, you know, that, that was all good. I mean, you know, I'm legal. I just didn't have it with me right now, which is no excuse. You know, they can still give you like a correctable ticket. But I think that would be more of a state trooper thing. I don't think these uh, federal guys probably worry about that. Um, what else? I don't know. A lot of air traffic. A lot of planes going over back and forth. And... Uh, couple of vehicles uh, actually here's one here's one now and uh, I told Rob Roy and Chuk <clears throat> like I'm gonna come out here on Thursday and uh, secure the camp spot because it's Memorial Day weekend and there's no way that this place is gonna be free on uh, Memorial Day weekend and it's not, it's not super popular, like not a lot of people know about it, but uh, enough people know about it. <clears throat> and sure enough, like two hours after I got here and got set up, somebody drove by and like stopped and like looked and then kind of like went on. And I was like, ah, I got it. I got them. I beat them. You got to get up early in the morning to beat beans. And uh, that made me feel pretty good that I know I didn't come out here for no reason. Because if nobody had stopped here like all day and nobody acted like they were interested in the site I'd have been like I could have just came out tomorrow with those guys we could have met up and I drove them out here but <clears throat> I think I made the right call I think I 
I did the right thing by coming out here early and uh, reserving the spot. I told the <clears throat> the federal wildlife guy, I was like, yeah, because he asked me, he's like, are you, you know, you got more guys coming, you you're just holding down the spot? And I said, yeah, I said, I'm like the, the grocery spacer on the on the checkout. I'm just holding the spot. I'm just taking up space till, till everybody gets here. <laughs> so, all right, I think uh, even though it's still pretty bright out, I think I'm going to go ahead and start my fire because uh, after it burns out, I'm probably going to lay down and go to bed. And it's probably going to burn for about four hours because that's what my Dura flame is going to burn for. Uh, you know, a lot of guys, they like to do that primitive campfire stuff and like make fire from like a piece of lint and a uh, paper clip or something. But, you know, I can do that. I know I can do it. And I probably do need to practice it occasionally. But, man, <clears throat> sometimes it's just not worth the hassle, especially on a beautiful day. You know, I just want the fire to go. But uh, anyway, if anything happens later, we'll check back in. Otherwise, we'll see what happens in the morning. And, uh, you know, I'll let you guys know when uh, Chuke and Rob Roy start arriving. <laughs>